Hey guys, welcome. If you have even remotely delved into the world of game development, then you know how much of a struggle it can be. And one of the biggest struggles that you're going to face is the constant daily feeling that you have absolutely no idea what in the hell you're doing. And the hardest part of this is a lot of the time it's going to feel like you are the only person in the world that has these struggles. So before we get into anything, I just want to say you are definitely not alone. In fact, help me prove this, guys. Give this video a like if you feel like you have no idea what in the hell you're doing and you're just groping around in the dark trying to find your way. If that's you or if that's ever been you, then drop a like. I know you've been there. I knew it. Guys, by the end of this video, you are going to be feeling a lot better about this. And I want to offer some strategies and some resources that have helped me deal with this issue head on. Making a video game is hard enough without doubting yourself every single step of the way. Feeling like you're competent at something requires a certain amount of experience. You are not going to feel like a competent developer until you have had many, many successes and a hundred times as many failures. This takes time, usually just a consistent amount of work put in every day for a long period of time. And the thing about game dev is the sheer amount of skills that you have to master, especially if you're a solo developer or an indie developer. It's absolutely insane. And the other thing is that every single game that you work on is going to have its own unique skill set requirements. Games are a little bit like people in that they are all unique. They all require different tools, different workflows, and different styles of programming. And so when you put all of this together, it becomes very clear that every single game developer you know or have learned from, they've all been here at one point or another. And they still feel this way sometimes. Even the most skilled artist or illustrator that you know, they use reference photos and mood boards to select their style. Even the most skilled programmers need to research things, they need to look things up, and they need to refactor old code that they are not happy with. Even the most skilled level designer, they iterate and they end up scrapping work that they're not happy with. There is no one out there that does things perfect on their first try every single time. We're all students here and we're all learning here. As humans, we like to think that we, as individuals, are special, like we deal with unique struggles that literally no one else has to deal with, or like everybody around us is competent and capable except for us. And this just is not true. And knowing this and remembering it every time you start to get down on yourself for having a hard time figuring something out, it's going to help you tremendously. And it's going to help you stay focused on the next steps, which we are going to cover now. Now that we know that it's an even playing field out there, we can develop a plan to achieve the level of mastery that we are craving. So. How can we do that? Do you ever find yourself saying out loud that you plan on doing something, but there's there's this little voice in the back of your head that's like, yeah, no, you're not gonna do that. Like, it just knows that is not going to happen anytime soon. You might say, I wanna learn how to speak Italian, but that little voice in the back of your head's kinda like, okay, when? <laughs> when are you going to make time to do that? I bring this up because developing a learning plan is something that very easily just gets swept under the rug. At least to me, it sounds ridiculous at the surface level. Develop a plan for learning. What the f does that even mean? Well, let's get real here for a minute. Whether you're full-time or part-time, or you're making a game for a career, or you're making a game purely for fun, it doesn't matter. There is a certain skill set that you are hungry for. Probably more than one. Programming, art, sound, music, particles, shaders, optimization, lighting, level design, etc, etc. There's so many things. If you want to be successful at finishing your game, then you have a lot to learn. And so the quicker that you can learn, the better. So why not treat game dev, your profession, the thing that you are trying to master, and put a plan together to learn those skills as efficiently as possible. You know yourself best. How do you learn fastest? You know your favorite websites and YouTube channels. Who do you like to learn from? You have strengths and weaknesses. What are your weaknesses? What do you want to improve at? Put together a plan of what you want to learn and then create a daily habit that's going to force you to implement that plan. Even if it's 15 minutes a day, in a day, you're not going to learn much in 15 minutes, but you will be shocked at how much you learn in a month just doing 15 minutes of work a day. I spent two years in tutorial purgatory, and that is a term that means that you are caught in this loop of constantly learning and watching tutorials, but never actually letting yourself work on anything by yourself. And I did that because I wanted to do everything right. I wanted to know all the best practices and the standard way of doing things and how the experts did it. And this can be an especially easy trap to fall into if you are self-taught right from the beginning. Thinking this way is going to slow you down. The fastest way you are going to learn is by doing it 
and doing it wrong. Doesn't have to be the most efficient, doesn't have to be the most optimized. If it works, be proud. And I'll give you an example that a lot of you will be familiar with. If you have watched one of those, the most fundamental basics game dev tutorial type of videos, like it's one of those make your first game tutorials, then you are going to learn in Unity how to spawn objects into the scene using the instantiate method. And you're gonna learn how to despawn objects from your scene using the destroy method. And what you will see in a lot of the comments section of those videos are programming purists who criticize the tutorial for not using object pooling. And in case you don't know, object pooling is the standard best practice for spawning and despawning objects in your scene. It's the most efficient way you can do it. It works by reusing assets that have already spawned into your scene. It just activates and deactivates things at the appropriate time. And doing things this way, it is far more optimized than instantiating and destroying things. And yet, having said this, a good tutorial that is for beginners, it's going to ignore object pooling. And that is simply because it is just too much information for someone that just wants to learn the absolute basics. The point is, when it comes to learning, you're going to learn things in stages. If you want to learn how to use your game engine, you're not going to start by learning all of the keyboard shortcuts. You're first going to learn how to navigate inside of your game engine and get comfortable inside of it. Keyboard shortcuts and other tips like that, that's going to come later with time. You can always go back and refactor things. You do not need to worry about doing it right on your first try. Worry about getting things to work first. And when you are ready to level up and do things more optimally, learn how to do that at the appropriate time. This is important for all devs, but it is particularly important if you are an indie dev where you're not just going into work and sitting across from some expert all day long. You can do things yourself, 100%. You do not need other people to learn how to do things, but you will learn a lot faster if you learn how to leverage the expertise of other people. The master and apprentice style of learning has been around forever and it's still applicable today, just not in the literal sense, because for whatever reason, when I say master and apprentice, I always think of blacksmith. Is that just me? It's probably just me. But if you consider yourself the apprentice because you are still learning and people online with a higher degree of expertise are the masters, well then we want to utilize this as best as we can. There are discord servers, forums, YouTube channels, blogs, courses, so, so, so much more. There is a wealth of knowledge and expertise out there. So join some communities, post things, ask questions, take every single criticism you get as an opportunity to learn to do better. At the same time, take advice with a grain of salt and always fact check when people tell you things just to make sure Sure that what you're learning is accurate, especially if it's just from random comments from people that are just wanting to sound smart. And this same advice holds true for wanting to improve your game as well. Lean on other people. Find playtesters. Other people are going to think of things that you didn't or couldn't think of because you're going to be biased towards your own project. If you can think of your game dev journey or your journey of creating this game that you're working on as this massive canyon that you need to somehow get across, then other people are your bridge. You need to make your own mistakes and learn from them, but you you can learn from other people's mistakes as well, and you can use their expertise as a shortcut to hit your goals. Use them as the bridge to cross your own canyon faster. If you want to be learning as fast as possible, you want to have a project going at all times. Even if you are brand new and you are just learning how to recreate Flappy Bird or Pong, you should have a project on the go. You're going to improve at a rapid rate when you are forced to tackle problems head on yourself as opposed to being handheld through them with tutorials. You're forced to take all the tools and all the knowledge that you currently have and piece those things together to form a solution. And if you can't do that, then you're going to have to gain more tools and more knowledge in order to find a solution. But one of the least mentioned, but also I think one of the most important reasons for having a project on the go at all times is because this way you are daily, constantly proving to yourself that you've got this. Eventually, even if you still feel like you don't know what you're doing, you'll at least start to trust yourself to handle things. When you've hit a hundred different walls a hundred different times, and every single time you manage to research or make a plan or gain new skills in order to get past that wall, you're just going to start trusting yourself, even if you still just consider yourself a beginner or an intermediate developer. Having trust in your own abilities is going to take you far. And oftentimes this way, you're going to end up choosing the best possible project that you can work on because that decision was not based on fear that you couldn't handle it.
I really want you guys to walk away from this video with some tangible resources that can really help you. I'm not going to waste your time listing them all to you, but I've linked the best YouTubers that I know of that will help you level up just about any game dev skill that you can imagine down below in the description. From 2D art and animation tutorials to visual effects, recreating popular game mechanics, leveling up your C-sharp programming, creating systems, tools, and UI, working with Cinemachine and the input system, VR development, by far the best 2D player controller that I have ever found online as well as well-rounded just general knowledge tutorial channels. I have listed all of them down for you in the description below and this is all based on hundreds of hours of my own time from learning and watching tutorial videos. These are the best ones that I have ever found. On top of that if you are a Unity developer you might not know that Unity occasionally publishes free ebooks that are filled with knowledge from experts and Unity employees. Not everyone knows about these so you're going to be gaining an edge from checking these out. I have included a link to Unity's ebook about 2D art animation and lighting. I've also included a link to Unity's ebook for productivity and workflow improvements. And the one that I'm really excited about, I have also included a link to Unity's ebook for leveling up your programming. In that one, they give you specific game programming patterns and teach you how experts go about programming scalable systems. So if you are a little bit obsessed with finding the best practices or how experts do things, then that's one you're going to want to check out. And that's all I have for you guys. I want to hear from you. How did you find these tips? Do you have any more that you would like to share? Do you also always feel like you don't know what you're doing? What have you done in the past to overcome these problems? Do you have any invaluable resources that you would like to share? You guys have so much to share and you all have so much knowledge. I can't wait to hear from you. Let us know in the comments down below. And as always, I hope you have an amazing day. Bye.